Hey there, how's it going? Today I'm going to be having a look at the GoPro Hero 9 and showing you what most people would call the most cinematic settings for the Hero 9. What I'm going to call it is the settings I use to collect the best quality data because that's really what you want out of this thing if you want to get that cinema looking image. And what's more, I'm going to go over each of these settings and sort of explain why we're setting them up the way we are so that you'll have an understanding and that when it comes to using these for yourself you'll be able to fiddle them around and change them for the scenario that you're filming in. Anyway let's get looking at these things um, don't forget by the way hit the subscribe button down below and you can leave any questions you've got in the comments below as well and I will get back to as many of them as I can. The secret to coming up with good video settings for any camera is coming up with a compromise or a balance between color reproduction, clarity and stabilization and those are the things we're going to be concentrating on. Let's start by turning on the GoPro and having a look at the existing profile settings. There's already one there called cinematic and we're going to go and edit that one. So here's my GoPro, I've already got it turned on, I'm just going to tap the screen to bring that up and I've got the cinematic profile already loaded down the bottom here. Currently it's at 2.7K resolution, 60 frames and wide angle, that's how it comes out of the box. So I'm just going to tap on that and bring up the profiles menu and I'm going to click the little edit pencil onto the side here so that it'll bring up the cinematic settings. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set the resolution and the frame rate. I'll do that just by clicking on that here and here it gives me all of the options I've got for that. So I'm going to click 4K and I'm going to set it at 30 frames per second. Now some people are going to pop up straight away and say but I want to shoot 24 frames a second because that's a more cinematic feel. And okay film used to be shot in 24 frames a second. Or you might say I want 25 frames a second because I live in a PAL region or 29.97 because I'm shooting for NTSC. None of that really matters much anymore because everything's being broadcast on digital TV or the internet and YouTube is all at 30 frames per second. Your TV's all at 30 frames per second. Digital TVs are all at 60 hertz. So 30 frames per second is where it's at. If you want to shoot at 24 frames a second, sure you can, but if you look at things shot 24 frames a second and watch them, you'll see that once or twice a second there's a frame jump or a frame duplicate where it duplicates a frame to make it 30 frames a second and it looks pretty ugly you just get this jerk 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 all the time so I'm going to set mine at 30 frames a second because I know that that's what it's going to get converted to online and I'm shooting for online and digital content so here we have it set at 4k 30 frames a second I'll just tap that lozenge in the middle and it'll go back to the main settings next bit we're going to look at is the lens setting so here it is set on wide what you probably want to change this to is either linear or linear with horizon leveling the difference between the horizon leveling and the straight linear is that the horizon leveling will stop the rotation you might have in the camera and with a little camera like a GoPro the uh, twisting it around like that is a very real danger the downside to that is it will soften the image just a fraction because it does crop in a little bit to give it that space to rotate. If you're shooting with the GoPro on a gimbal or something and that's going to get rid of that rotation possibility for you, then yeah, sure, linear is great and you'll get a little bit more clarity out of it. If you're not shooting on a gimbal, then the horizon leveling is a good thing to have on. So I'm just going to choose linear with horizon leveling that works for me i'll tap away and head back to the main screen the next one to look at is the stabilization now the stabilization on the gopro is called hyper smooth and this has got hyper smooth version 3 on it. it's the third generation of this digital stabilization the options you've got here are from turning the stabilization off or all the way up to a boosted stabilization for the most insane kind of things I'm going to set mine on the high stabilization. Now the high stabilization is going to crop in again about 10% on your image and that can soften it a little bit but don't forget that it's actually a 5k sensor we're shooting 4k so it's actually got that crop space without really causing too much softening on the image for what you get for the hyper smooth 3 for that it's absolutely fantastic. So the Hyper Smooth 3 here is set to high, that's what it is by default. And now what I'm going to do is just scroll a little bit until we can get to 
the ProTune settings. ProTunes is sort of the advanced settings where we tell the GoPro we don't want you to do the automatic color correction and white balancing and stuff like this. We want to do that ourselves. We want to set it. We've got an idea of what it is that we're doing with the camera and this is going to stop the GoPro from giving you a really good best guess result and it's going to tell it to just collect really good data that we can work with in post-production afterwards. The first thing we're going to look at here is the bit rate. Now the bit rate on the GoPro is set to standard out of the box. I'm going to turn that up to high. So I want to be collecting 100 megabits per second. And what that means is that every pixel that I'm collecting of video is going to have just that little bit more data and it. it's going to be a little bit clearer, it's going to have better color data, it's going to give me a wider color space and all that sort of thing. So I want to collect as much data as I can with as little compression as I can so the higher bit rate is going to give me that. The downside is it's going to use up a bit more space on my memory card. That's easy, memory's cheap these days, I'm just going to get a bigger memory card for the GoPro so I can shoot longer on it. Once again I'll just tap away and head back to here. The next thing I want to look at here is the shutter speed. Now shutter speeds are something that can be a bit controversial. A lot of people just say leave it on auto. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that up to be 1 60th of a second. So why am I picking 1 60th of a second specifically? There's a general rule of thumb in the film industry that your shutter speed should be double the frame rate which is not really how the math works but if you're shooting at 30 frames a second like I am then your shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second if you're shooting at 25 frames a second then your shutter speed should be 1 50th of a second and the reason for that is that it gives the viewer a comfortable amount of motion blur so that you don't get really jolty looking images by having a really fast shutter speed. If you imagine I set the shutter speed to 1 240th of a second instead of 1 60th of a second, then every frame is going to have an incredibly crisp image. You're not going to have any motion blur when something is moving. And when you play that back, it's going to look jud, 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 jud. It's like it's going to be like somebody's leg would be teleporting parts of a frame each time. If you have that little bit of motion blur in there, then it smooths the motion out, especially with fast motion. If you were to be shooting something that isn't moving much and you want a much crisper image for it, then maybe that's somewhere where you could increase that shutter speed just to make sure you're not getting any motion blur in. But that's a, a very rare circumstance. So generally, if you're shooting at 30 frames, 1 60th is normal. There's another thing about shutter speed where if you increase the shutter speed, then you're decreasing the amount of light that's coming in. So if you are working in an incredibly bright environment and you don't have ND filters available, then increasing the shutter speed can affect the amount of light coming in and lower the light so that you're not having things blow out. If you're shooting outside in a really high contrast situation, for example, and you're shooting up into the sky where there are clouds, you might want to increase it to 1 1 20th of a second, and that will halve the amount of light coming in per frame so that you're not going to have the sky blowing out or something like that. So I'll tap away from that one. I've set the shutter speed at 1 60th. And the next thing we're going to have a look at is white balance. The white balance by default on the GoPro is set to auto. This means it's going to work out what the colouring in the scene is like and try and correct that and give you a really good white balance. The problem with that is if, if the colour in the image changes, so say you're shooting somewhere that's got a lot of LEDs of colour or neon signs in the background, the white balancing might get a little bit off and shift around a bit, and then skin tones can change and all of that sort of thing. What I recommend doing is just shooting for 5500 Kelvin or 5400 Kelvin. That's the white level that you get in the middle of the day when the sun's high noon. It's pure daylight white and that's actually the color that the sensors are optimized to capture. So if you set it at 5500 Kelvin you use daylight white lights in your scene and then any incidental lights are going to come up the color that they actually are. Skin tones are going to look really good and you're going to have a much better image out of it. So let's just grab that and move it around and choose 5500 Kelvin which is about there and tap away and there's our color set up. 
The next one that I'm going to look at is the ISO levels. I'm going to look at these ones together. By default, the GoPro has a minimum ISO of 100 and a maximum ISO of 1600. Now, when it gets up to expanding to 1600 ISO, you're going to get a little bit of grain in it. And if you don't want your camera getting brighter and darker too much, then it's a good time here to level this down and limit the amount that the ISO is going to change. Otherwise, the GoPro is going to try and auto correct over quite a wide area if you're going in and out of dark and bright areas sometimes you might want it to do that for a particular effect shot say if you're coming from a dark tunnel out into a daylight scene then you're going to want the GoPro to be able to compensate for that better. Generally though, if you're shooting in one location and you don't want the ISO changing as people walk in front of natural light sources, for example, then you want to limit the amount that this thing can change. So what I'm going to do is leave the minimum at 100 and I like to just drop that down to 200 ISO. So I'm just going to bring that down to 200 or 400 ISO. Let's say 400 there. And that means when I'm shooting a scene with the GoPro, the brightness is going to be predictable and it's not going to keep going all over the place on me during the scene. I'm not going to have things suddenly go bright and suddenly go dark and that kind of thing. Now I can scroll down a little bit more. We've got the sharpness next. The sharpness by default is set on high. I like to just drop that back down to medium. The reason for that is I don't want things over sharpening and having... Um, funny artifacting on edges if you put the sharpness down to low it's actually going to be quite a soft image and the gopro does do a very good job of sharpening its own image up i just don't want it to do too much so that's why i like to leave it on medium and i'll set that there and tap away to go back to the main bit the color now this is one of the most important ones the default gopro color profile is going to give you some really bright crisp colors and it does do a very very good job of it but i like to use the flat profile which is going to give me more reliable data in the highlights and in the shadows i'm going to get a bit more texture that might otherwise be artifacted when the gopro is spending a lot of time computing the color information instead of saving detailed data i'd rather have less compression and do the um, color grading and everything myself in post it also gives you more options over the color grade and post so i can set the color profile just by clicking on here and choosing flat simple as that and finally we've got the raw audio now whether you need this or not i don't know if you do have raw audio on once again it's going to use a bit more space because it's going to save separate audio files but those audio files are going to be of a very high resolution so by default it's turned off if you want to move it up a little bit you can have it on on low processing or you can have it medium and high processing I'm going to choose the medium one it's going to give me a really good quality audio file so if there's something in the actual gopro audio on the normal footage which isn't quite working or needs cleaning up then i can come here and get much better quality audio data which i can then put into another program to tidy up and maybe get rid of some background noise or some some fuzz or crackling or, or whatever it is or maybe i just want a better dynamic range of audio for something this is going to give me more audio data so there's less compression and a higher bit rate and so once again i just tap to back out of that one and there we are we're done and so those are the settings that i like to have in my gopro to make sure i can get the best quality image out of it with a little bit of post-production work if this has been useful to you don't forget to click down here and watch this video and this video hit the notify bell as well and you can leave any questions or comments you've got in down below and i will get back to you on them and i'll see you in another video really shortly have a good one